Hi, my name is Samantha and welcome to today's video. Today we're going to be talking about sewing preparedness. Let's get into it. September is preparedness month and I'm going to do my own take on it in the realm of sewing. Preparedness is something that's very important to me in every realm of my life when it comes to food, toiletries, sewing, just everything in life. I hate to be in a situation where, oh, you run out of deodorant and now you've got to go down to the um, gas station and go pay $10 for a thing of deodorant. No, I always get things ahead of time before I need them. And in the case of sewing, a lot of the items you can acquire at the thrift store and you can save a lot of money. Um, also, even if you are not doing sewing as a hobby, it's good for everyone to have some sort of sewing kit on hand. If you are not someone who sews, you could have all of your items in the size of like a gallon size Ziploc bag just so that you have them on hand. What if we ever run into a situation again like COVID where you have to make a face mask or you need to hem your pants and you can't go out to go get it done and you have to get something done on your own. It's good to have some products on hand so that then you're prepared for whatever situation may arise. So when it comes to sewing and your sewing machine, this would be like putting a new needle in and making sure you have enough needles on hand. Um, I usually buy my needles in bulk off of Amazon or when I do my yearly restock at Joann's, I'll buy whatever the deal is. Buy three, get two free, whatever it may be. But I like to keep them all in this container. I have this container from the Dollar Tree. That way they're not loose and running around. And I have a ton of machine sewing needles. I also have a large container of hand sewing needles so that I can do either or whatever I may need. Also for your sewing machine, it's good to have some oil on hand so that when you're doing your routine maintenance, cleaning your sewing machine, oiling it, making sure everything's okay, that you can add a little bit of oil. If you're not comfortable doing that, then you'll need to annually take your sewing machine to a sewing, ma sewing machine repair shop so that they can do that for you. Um, I personally have had my sewing machine for over four years and earlier this year was the first time I ever had to take it to the sewing machine repair shop. And so keeping up with your machine and routine maintenance will save you money and time that you don't have to take it to the repair shop. Um, another thing is to clean it regularly. Depending on how often you use it is how often you need to clean it. Um, if you're someone who sews every once in a while, then it's a good routine that when you go to sew a project that you go ahead and clean it out and add a new needle. If you don't want to deal with that when you go to start a project, make that the end of your project routine. That way that you know when you go to start a new project, you have a fresh needle and you have a clean machine. If you're someone who sews regularly, maybe you need to clean it once a month or once a project or once a week. Just figure out whatever is working best for you and clean it. If you can't remember when you last cleaned it, it's time to clean it. Another thing you can do is make a sewing machine cover, which is something that I want to do in an upcoming video. I do use the cover that I got from um, my serger. It's just a piece of plastic. and I do keep that over my serger at all times. Uh, but my sewing machine, I use that so regularly that I don't put the cover on it, which is bad. I should put the cover on it. So I want to make a cute cover so I'm incentivized to put it on. Um, as far as materials, the big things are fabric, thread, needles, and scissors. So fabric, you can see I have all my fabric behind me here. The vast majority of this fabric I acquired from the thrift store. So I spent less than a dollar a yard, or it was gifted to me, or I got it from a yard sale or Facebook Marketplace. Um, the cotton flannel I did purchase from Joann's. I have a hard time getting cotton flannel at the thrift store um, or secondhand, but the majority of this fabric I found at the thrift store. Even if you're not someone who sews, it's good to have some fabric on hand. If you, you know, change out your curtains and you don't want those curtains anymore, maybe keep one pack of them just so that you have some material in case you need it for something. You don't know what you may need it for. Um, it'd be good to have patches for your jeans so that you can iron those on. Um, the thread. Uh, there are three thread categories that I see. Is The first one your main thread. So for me, I use Guterman thread pretty much for everything. Um, so at the end of the year, I'll do whatever the deal is, buy three, get two free or whatever Joann's is doing, I'll buy that deal. Um, so I buy a lot of 
black and white because that's what I go through a lot. I only use a colored thread for top stitching. So I buy the thousand meter black and white and I just buy as many of them as I need. I go through about three of them a year, three whites, three blacks. And then um, I also have the other primary colors that I use such as blue and gray and red and also tan. I go through a lot of tan for the jar openers. So those are like my base threads that I use for a lot of interior stitching. Then for top threads, I love this Guterman pack. It has 26 different spools in here and I just use these for top stitching and then I don't have to go buy a special thread for a project. I have all of the colors right here and I'll just find whichever color works best. Now thread is not something that I would recommend buying from the thrift store because you don't know how old it is and if you use an old thread in your sewing machine two things can happen. One, it could break, continuously break. Two, it could be dusty and it could make a lot of dust within your machine causing your machine to break and you have to take it to a repair shop. The other kind of thread I go through a lot is surging thread and the surging thread is for the serger. You go through four rows at four rolls at a time. So I buy this once a year on Amazon uh, for the amount that I need. Uh, the basic would just be black and white, but I also get gray and um, brown and navy. I've also gotten red and purple this year. So having a bunch of serger thread is very helpful. Now you may look at the price of serger thread and say, hey, I wanna buy that and use it for my sewing machine. Don't do it. Sewing machine thread and serging thread are two separate threads. Because the serger has four spools that it's pulling from, these are threaded with less strands. So I believe that the serger thread is two strands versus the sewing machine thread is three strands. And that means that the sewing machine thread is much thicker and more sturdy and it does not fray as much. If you use the serger thread on your sewing machine projects, then you will have dusty, like it'll get dusty inside your machine and it will not be strong. So do not try to do the cheaper option and use your serger thread on your sewing machine. It will not work out in the end. Uh, the next thing is needles, which we already talked about. So I like to buy the sewing machine needles uh, and the hand sewing needles and just have a bunch of them on hand. That way, if they break, whatever, I'll just change it out. I don't want to be working in the middle of the project and oh no, now I don't have any needles. It's not worth it. Just have them on hand and then you're ready to go. Scissors. Now you may be a scissor person or a rotary cutter person. Either way, you want to have some extras on hand. So for example, I have two um, fabric scissors. These are not for paper. These are fabric scissors. Uh, I do need to get these sharpened, but it's good to have a pair of sharpened scissors and more than one. For the rotary cutter, I do have multiple packs on hand and I like once I've used up a pack because then that becomes my discard pack. So I can just safely put the discarded blades in one of the old packages and just write bad on it with Sharpie. On that same line of thought, it's great to have multiple, um, what are these called, seam rippers on hand because unfortunately we make mistakes and you're going to need to seam rip regardless of if you're a hobby sewist or uh, you're just sewing on a button. You may mess up, you may need a um, seam ripper and the seam rippers, I believe they're only good for like three to six months, like they go bad pretty fast so it's good to have a bunch on hand. And even once they go bad, you could still find uses for them. Like if you chain stitch a project, you can use a, a seam ripper to go ahead and break those apart because you don't need to be as perfect. So definitely seam rippers, having a bunch of them is a great thing to have on hand. Safety pins and pins are a great thing to have a bunch of because it doesn't hurt to have extras. So if you are just a need to have a little bit for your button. So far, I would just have in your bag a pair of scissors, uh, some safety pins, some pins, a seam ripper, some nice thread, and needles, whether you have sewing machine needles or hand stitching needles. Some other things that you can use is bias tape. Again, you can easily find this at the thrift store. This is great for finishing off a project, especially if you don't have a serger or you don't have a sewing machine and you just wanna finish off a project. You could use this along with heat and bond so that you have an ironed finished hem. Heat and bond is also great for projects that you need to roll something up and heat and bond it. So heat and bond and bias tape are great things for finishing. And both of these you can find at the thrift store. 
Zippers are another great thing to have on hand. Um, if you like sewing different projects and you're a hobbyist, it's way cheaper to buy your zippers at the thrift store. Just take a look at them and make sure that they're still in their packaging. If they're out of the packaging, test them out and make sure that they still have a good zip on them because they may have been removed from another project and you wanna make sure that they're still good. But zippers are a great thing to have on hand. I always pick them up as long as they're less than a dollar and I just throw them in this bag. And when I need to work on a project, I just look through them and pick the one that I want. It's like having my own zipper shop. Now this is not necessarily necessary but i have found this super helpful on a bunch of different projects i have a cam snap machine so this is like if you had a little um let's say a little money pouch and you like snap it shut and you can open it if you know what i'm talking about like a, a little snap pouch these are how you make them again this is just something i bought off amazon i like having it in this little case so it's um i don't lose the pieces or the machine you just poke a hole, there's a female side and a male side, you put it on each side of the project, you use the pliers to snap it shut, and there's your project, and then you have a closure. Along the same line, Velcro is another great thing to have on hand, and you can find that at the thrift store too. We're on to our last section of items. So, buttons. Buttons are definitely something you can find at the thrift store all the time. Just pick yourself up one jar of buttons and then you'll be set for life. Or every time that you get a new item of clothing that has a button on it, have a little candle jar that's empty and just throw buttons in there and then you'll have all your buttons for whenever you need a button project. This is another great thing like the cam snaps. This is a package of closures. So it has a metal version of the cam snaps. It has like, you know, on a dress, how you have those little like hook and eyes. So this is great for if there's an item of clothing that you bought in the, um, the clasp falls off or if you want to add another clasp to make it more secure this is great to have on hand if you randomly need it i lied one more thing elastic if you ever make scrunchies or if you make pants whatever kind of elastic that you use more than once it's great to buy it on the roll. You don't want to have to go run to the store, go to Walmart, go to Joann's, go to your local fabric store to go buy 12 inches of elastic because you need it for a project. Just buy it on a roll, throw it in the drawer, and then you have it whenever you need it. Same goes for bag handle straps, bag handle strap straps for bags. Great to just have it on hand. That way you can use it whenever you want to. Let me, know. oh, one more thing. I keep forgetting. I keep forgetting something. Okay. Promise. Last item. Interfacing. Interfacing is definitely something that you can find at the thrift store. For example, I bought this interfacing right here at the thrift store. I have all of my different interfacing here. They're all different kinds. I like to keep the bags if they do come in a bag. That way I know what they are. And also for my fusible fleece and my SF-101, I like to buy those as a whole bolt from Joann's. That way I don't have to go to the store every time I want to use it. And when I go to the store, I don't have to worry about them cutting it wrong. You know how we talked about in the shrinkage video of how much fabric is lost uh, when you go buy it at the store. I don't have to worry about that. I can cut it precisely exactly how much I want. So depending on how much it is that you use, it's definitely good to just buy the whole bolt. If you're not someone who sews all the time and you're just putting it in your preparedness kit, it's good to have some of like the jean patches or just whatever you find at the thrift store. Maybe get one yard of SF-101 or one of the other ones. They do sell like at Walmart little packs smaller than this. The heat and bond, that also comes in a little pouch. So it's good to just have those things on hand that way that you can have them when you need them. And by putting them in you know, a Ziploc bag, a cereal box, a shoe box, something that they're all together. That way you have all of your sewing materials whenever you need them. When, oh mom, my button fell off. I got it, I can go ahead and sew that on. Oh no, I need a new piece of Velcro on my shirt. Oh, the snap on my dress fell off. It's good to just be prepared and have some of these things on hand. And every time you go to the thrift store, just take a look, see what you can find, and then use your best judgment on whether or not the item is new enough and well-kept enough to buy. I would love to uh, know if you have any other suggestions for items you think that people need in their preparedness kit for sewing in the comment section down below. Please don't forget to like and subscribe and have a wonderful day.